But uh, say, man, thanks for pressing play, man. You tuned in with the voice of the youth, Taco Talk TV. And today, of all days, is a great day. It's Taco Tuesday. And today, we sing with Mr. Harvey. Better be an Olympian? Nah, you already an Olympian. My man is already an Olympian. Yes, sir, an Olympic gold medalist from Washington, D.C.? I, I guess I claim both. I grew up in uh, Southeast. Okay. I'm on my dad to PG. Like okay. Okay, all right. Respect. That's understandable. That's that, but you still, okay, but my man is still right here and he's an Olympian. You know what I'm saying? Are you watching this? Are you watching this? Do you see what's going on on Taco Talk TV? Like, this, bro, it's right here. What's going on with you? How you feeling? What, what's the word? What's the... uh? Man, just getting ready, getting in shape. About to go to this, this last training camp. Okay. Get this on the gold medal and go pro. Right, right, right. Okay, going pro is... On. What was that like? What, what school you went to? I went to Henley and Hart. Okay. But growing up Southeast, it was cool. Um... Got in a lot of fights growing up. Right. So you were starting them joints. Nah, I wasn't starting them. I don't. Truth be told, when I was young, I don't even know why I fought so much. Like I, I think back to it, like why did I fight in school so much? Like I was fighting like every day. I swear to God. But yeah, I fought a lot growing up. But I feel like that helped me out. Right. Uh, fighting in school around the way. We just aggressive kids growing up. Everybody always outside. Somebody hit you too hard, do a two hand touch. Like oh, nah, right. we gotta fight now. So it's like. I feel like that helped me out because once I got in the box and I was already a fighter, like I was already going forward, like ain't nobody about to whoop me. Right. So that that really helped me out. You think this this one of the things I kind of wanted to save it for later, but since we're right here, I just wanted to say you feel like the the DC and you just helped mold you into be a better boxer. Yeah, for sure. That aggression, uh, knowing knowing how to uh, should know how to shit talk, all that, like. Just that anger, just got that edge over me, and it's like you want to get out too. So, right. and then you got everybody around the way proud of you. Everybody, oh, what's up, Lord Floyd? This and that. So, right. it was cool. Nah, I, I definitely want to get more into that, but I just want I want to keep it going. Like when you got to when you got to high school, what was going on? Was you was you still fighting? You was composed, or what was going on? Nah, by the time I got to high school, I kind of like chilled out, and everybody. Kind of like it's it's kind of got like known that I box. I was right. cool with everybody. I really I'm really quiet. Like I feel like my first if you didn't know me in school, if you ain't if I ain't talked to you, you probably didn't know I box. I was quiet, but by like eleventh grade when they seen I was doing all these things, winning nationals and stuff, the school would shout me out on the on the uh, little intercom and stuff. Yeah, more than announcements. So, but I was cool with everybody. I was, yeah, I was, I was chill. I ain't yeah. getting no fights. When when you start boxing now? I started boxing when I was in eighth grade. I was like twenty, was like twenty fifteen. What was the what was the story? Like you had just got suspended for like the last time or something? Or nah, my uh, football coach, my football coach, he was uh, starting the gym up. And he was taking the little f the football players from the field after the season, stay in shape. Right. I came up there, uh, train, and then when you first come, he make you spar. So we fighting. I'm already used to fighting. I'm just throwing in there, throwing. I'm not scared of nobody. So I fell in love with it. Really, it's like I get to fight for fun now. Like right. I was already a fighter, so it was cool. Was you was you like watching any boxing before that? No, nah, I wasn't watching no boxing before that. <laughs> Like I used to, like I, I say, I always would try to go. The only fights I can remember, remember wa watching growing up was like Floyd fights, and I ain't even watch him because he used to fight like late, like twelve o'clock. Right, I'd be sleep by then. Right, right, right. Fine. Can you remember like your favorite fight be before high school was over? My favorite fight? No, I don't remember my favorite fight. I know I got to a fight in high school up Six Flags. That joint went a little viral a little bit. Yeah. That's when I that's when I I was already in the box and I was I was right. going winning nationals and stuff and it's my first time fighting without gloves. Right. And everybody it was like me, five of my men, and then it was probably like ten people like on the other side. They was trying to fight my little brother. I'm like my little brother fighting one on one. Right. But he but he 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 fought too. So he dropped first dude, they all ran up. 
So damn, me and my other man, we all boxed though. That was <laughs> that's that's the crazy thing. Like, they didn't even know who they was messing with. It's like everybody I touch, one hit going down. Like, they were just <laughs> dropping. Then they in the video, dude slumped over. Like I'm like, dang, I ain't even know I could hit that hard. <laughs> I ain't never. That was my first time sleeping some on the bed knuckle joint. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> man, that's crazy. That hey, look, y'all need to stay dangerous, stay smart, and stay dangerous. That's mm -hmm. like the number one thing we could tell you. We don't promote the violence, but it's a crazy city where we come from. Where we where we come from, you know. So I just want to make sure y'all on point. You know what I'm saying? But um, that that's crazy, bro. So so you said this was before you went to nationals. What was going on? Like, how did you even get into, like, the levels of it? Because, you know, some people, they just box locally, um, mm -hmm. get a couple of matches locally, and don't really get to going further as far, especially as far as tournaments, like, before going pro, like. I mean, that was all on my coach believing in me and putting in the time and investing in me, uh, taking time away from his family, his kids, to go out to these nationals and sign me up. It was really all on him. It took, it took a whole team, really. My right. family that get me out there too. Yeah. Nah, shout out to your family or your team or whoever was with you. I was watching a couple videos and I heard somebody they they called out a combo. They like, Jab, Jab, well hit him in the chin or something. <laughs> and you did it though. Like you came through. I'm like, oh, out of all the voices, like you heard that one, but I heard it because I uh -huh. seen you do it. I'm looking, I'm like, oh bro, it's really like that. But that's your uh your people, your your team, like how much do they mean to you? What's what's their participation in your journey been like? Uh, they mean a lot. We've been in it since day one, so it's like I trust in them. Anything I know, they're not gonna put me in no bad situation. Right. So I'm just taking this one step at a time, and I'm we coming together. We we talk. We figure out what's the best plan, what's the next steps, and we just go and uh, work hard and accomplish what we need to accomplish. The the people who. Um, I just want to fast forward a little bit. The people who be on the ringside <laughs> with you at your fights, are those the same people that you train with? Ringside, yeah, the same people that be ringside would be uh, the. Well, I got two sets of coaches now because I train out Colorado now at the Olympic Training Center. Right. So we got the Olympic coaches, but when I come back home, I got my own personal club coach. Right. Okay. Yeah, because I was watching the fights, so I'm looking like okay. They must really know something, you know what I'm saying? Because I see you, you be in there putting in that work. And then I, I was just watching a couple of fights, and I heard even the commentators are screaming like, yeah, he's he's definitely like that. He's somebody to look out for, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Uh, I definitely want to go back, though. I ain't trying to get out of line, but I'm just thinking because I watched all that today. Uh -huh. I was watching all that this morning. I'm yeah. like, bro, it's really like that. But the journey to nationals, like, what was those challenges like? Or where was you fighting people from? Cause this is like in high school. Yeah, um, I was fighting all the best people in the area. Like my first year of boxing, I was losing. Well, I lost. Yeah, I lost locally. I lost locally to go to my first national for the silver gloves. I lost, but then by my second year, I took off. Cause I was sparring all the best, the best in the area, getting all the best work, fighting all the best people. So. By the time my second year boxing, I, I was going to nationals, and I was just racking up wins. Right. Was it how many fights was it? So at nationals, I usually was having about when I was when I yeah I was having about three to four fights nationals. This like a, a week. Uh, and a week and a week time. Okay. Yeah. Okay, and these still the the three round joints. Three rounds, yeah. Okay. All right. Dang, and you was cooking everybody out there? Yeah. I was yeah, I was cooking everybody. It was even sometimes in Nationals where the oh more gotta fight him. And then I go in there and I dominate and they be like, dang, I ain't even expect you to do that. We'd have been coming to Nationals for years saying him smoke everybody. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely looked like everybody like you cooking. Like everything I watched, it looked like you cooking everybody. You know what I'm saying? Um and I was watching, I'm like, dang, like I'm definitely honored and proud to meet you. Shout out to you for being an Olympian. Appreciate you know it. Gold medalist, man from the area, you know what I'm saying? Going up, being on Taco Talks TV. I just I'm like, damn, bruh's really, really doing shit. Appreciate <laughs> it. <laughs> but I was gonna say though, like, did you ever take a break? Like after high school, or you just been nah. going nonstop? I've been going at this boxing nonstop, really. 
Like, even I, even when football season had, when I was first doing both, and football season came around, I was going to football practice from six to eight, then going to, right from football practice, going to the gym, getting out the gym at like ten o'clock as a kid. Right. So, I was I was dedicated. Man, and what was what was like your training regimens? Like, what was your discipline like? Because I think I, I I seen something. I think I heard somebody say that you was real disciplined. Yeah, I was disciplined with training wise. Like, I I never took a day in the gym for granted. I always went hard at everything I did. I didn't have to start getting disciplined to with like dieting and stuff till I got older because my coach believed, like I said, he believed in me so much. And when I sparred, I would spar like people better than me and I sparred people bigger than me. So anytime I was like big for a weight, too big for the uh, weight I just uh, won at, I just move up to the next weight class and take that journal. over. Like I ain't fight in the same weight class. I moved up every year till I got to the weight class I'm at now. Dang. And I've been at this weight class for four years. Just clearing every level. <laughs> Cleared every level. I went from 80, I won at 80, I won at 85, I won at 90, won at 95, 101, 106, 114. Then I went to 123. But then the 123 switched to 125. So I've been at that for the past four years. All right. Dang. <laughs> Just clearing the levels, cuz congratulations going up. Like, I appreciate it. The, how did you come across that mentality though? You said you wasn't taking out a day for granted in the gym. I feel that too though. Like I'm I'm not really training for nothing except for to be healthy. But when I go to the gym, I try my best not to like half ass it. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying yeah. really to give it my all. That's come from all the anime. I don't watch all the practice <laughs> going hard. But you know what I'm saying? I just how you come across that mindset? I don't even know. I think you were just in me. Like I always I don't know. Ain't nobody ever had to push me. And that's what I said. That's what my parents always say. It made it easy because it was just me. Like, I always, I don't know. I, th I feel like I just always had something to prove. And I always wanted to be something in life. So, right. I was always thinking, like, man, I'm going to be rich. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and you like are. That, yeah. Like, I'm going to get to it. I'm going to do something with my life. Right. Nah, that's super cool. That's super cool. I ain't going to lie to you. So, do you really be having time to parlay and be around in DC? Yeah, I, I be having time. I be around. Right. Especially uh now and I really be trying to do a lot of like things for the community and stuff. So right. Oh yeah, you just had an yeah. event recently. Yeah. How was that? That event event was cool. Had a, a Olympic send off party at Tank Outlets. Thank Tank Outlets for uh, hosting that. They hit me up, hosted it, do a great event. A lot of people came out. Cool. Yeah, shout out to you. Shout out to you. I, I think that's definitely cool. I think a lot of people don't think about the impact of giving back. You know what I'm saying? They yeah. say they do, or they might do it, or they might do it for like Christmas and Thanksgiving, and that's mm -hmm. all we ever see. Go back to school. You know what I'm saying? But we really do need a lot more giving back, you know what I'm saying, and events. And it don't always have to be spending money to give back. I think that's another thing that people miss. Like, it could just be your time and attention. You know what I'm saying? For Dedication sure. to the to the to the people and showing up for people. You know yeah. saying? Just being present. Nah, yeah, for real. That go a long way. Just talk to somebody. Just one conversation might motivate them to do something do something big. Nah, for real. I definitely think about um some of the people that motivate me that kinda help inspire me to this journey. But you said you were self pushed, so did you have any inspirations or anybody that you was like, all right. Just as even if it's not inspiration, but more somebody that you feel like maybe you're a competitor. Um, yeah, I was a competitive person, so my inspiration was just wanting to be the best. Uh, I said, just wanting to be the best, really. Um, right. I see people like when I got in the box, and I didn't know what what it was or what I really wanted to do with it. Like I just I wanted to do it, but I didn't know about all the the pro how to, how the uh, business and stuff work with it. Right. And then I ain't know nothing about the Olympics until I got in the box until 2016 Olympics. And I'm looking, I'm like, I want to go to the Olympics. Because <laughs> uh, Gary Russell from this area, okay. he was on that team, went to the Olympics. So that's when I found out about it. And it was like, yeah, the best amateurs, the best boxers go to the Olympics, like the best athletes go to the Olympics. Yeah. I so I, I only knew about like the Olympic basketball and stuff. Right. So when I first watched, they were talking about Olympic basketball. I was like, okay, he's the best, all the best stars playing together. So 
I said, I want to go to the Olympics. And I, they were saying what you need to go to the Olympics. You got to win the nationals, go to the training camp, win the, um, and then compete for the spot. I was like, that's what I'm going to do. So Man. I, and I seen, what was the, was it Santiago? Yeah. I seen that that uh, that that tournament. I seen most of them joints. How did you feel going out there? Or matter of fact, before we get into that, how do you like traveling? Because I imagine you've been to endless countries by now. Yeah, traveling it's cool. Sometimes, like it depends what what I'm doing. Because sometimes I really like Santiago was strictly business, so it was like I didn't even feel like I was in Santiago. I was at the boxing ring. Right. That was my mindset fighting. But it's cool to see different things. Uh, like you go to different like third world countries and you realize like you appreciate life more. Like I'm seeing kids right. outside playing basketball with a soccer ball and right. a cardboard nail to the to the Saturday house. I'm like, oh, they they still out there trying to get buckets, having but fun, having fun. So it's stuff like that to make you appreciate life more and appreciate what you got. And it's just good. I be going, seeing sites, seeing, right. going to uh, museums and stuff like that. Figure out their history. What what place you had the best food? Place that had the best food. What place had the best food? I'm gonna say when I went to. I don't know. I don't really be eating the street food like that. They tell us not to because yeah, we sure. might get. They got different FDA regulations right, and right, stuff. Right, for sure. But. Europe got some some good food. Like right. they got the gyros. They they right. always got the gyros. Torch. Torch, yeah. Like the, the gyros be hitting. And they got a lot of vegan options. Right. So you go to like the fast food spots and stuff. They a lot of vegan options right. and stuff. So it'd be cool going to Europe. Fine. I don't eat too much vegan. I be thinking about the impossible burgers. I be crushing them impossible <laughs> burgers. <laughs> I believe. I believe. I feel like I might have had one. I ain't gonna lie. Look, I just had some tacos up there. To- tofu tacos. Them joints was kind of torch. Okay. But they was. They was. It was like a fruit. Like the fruit was like a. The meat was substituted for fruit, uh-huh. so it wasn't no meat, and it was like a fruit. Like okay. Yeah, tofu. It's hard to make. Like, it be hit or miss. I be really tofu. It's good. Like they be cooking at the OTC, but right. sometimes the cook don't make it right. Okay. Too much, you like. It's hard to make tofu. I even tried to make it a couple times. You take mumbo sauce on the road with you? No, nah, I don't take mumbo sauce on the road with me. I don't take it on the road with me. But you, when I'm home, I'm, I'm gonna have it though. Okay, what's the what's what's the proper color that mumbo sauce should be? The proper color, it should be like, hey, I'm gonna say. Reddish, reddish a little bit, but but not not that bright red. So hold on. So, I like so more like my shoes or more like your shirt. More like your shoes. Oh, all right. Okay, you know. But something. yeah, but I feel like it been changed. It's more like liquidy now. Yeah, yeah, I feel yeah, like yeah. back when I was growing up, I ain't really when I was growing up as a kid, I ain't like the texture of mumbo sauce. Like it was thick and like a little bit gooey, a little bit. Probably why I'm having the right one. You gotta like, have now when I was a kid, now now it's like it's like sauce, like yeah, like slime, like yeah, watery. Yeah, it ain't sauce. You like the more. watery one? No, no, no. I like the joints you talking about back in the day. That sauce, yeah. like when it was sauce, like now <laughs> that it's slime or it's drip or yeah. whatever it is, it's not the same. It's like you ever seen the Power Rangers with the ooze? Nah. I haven't ooze. The ooze? I haven't ooze. Oh, okay. uh, if you know, you know. But the motherfucking having ooze that slime, you don't want no slime. You want that motherfucking yeah. sauce, cause but damn. Let's see. So you had the nationals, and then how far into what well, after that did you start training for Olympic fights or qualifiers or getting into that round? Um. So when you first can make like an uh, Olymp uh. uh like a tribal team for the team USA, they got the junior team, right. and they got the, then they got the youth team, and then you, they got the elite team. So, I was winning my nationals when I was intermediate. Now, my first year junior, I was winning too, but I I only weighed like ninety five pounds, and you had the the weight limit is like one hundred six to start being on the team and uh, going to travel. So the next right. year I fought one hundred six, lost in the championship, hurt a little bit. Then the following year, for the same guy in the championship, uh, beat him. 
got my get back beat him when I got on that team. <laughs> so that was my first time. Uh, and then that was in, so I lost 2017. To, I lost in the national 2017 to get on the team for 2018. Then 2018, I won to be on the 2019 team. And then that was my first time. And I went to, um, I went to, where we go? They took us, my first time out, Colorado, training center by myself. No, my coach ain't with me. My parents ain't with me. I was, then went to Bulgaria, we seen the world. We and then we was youth. They took us to the mall. They was taking Hold us on, places. Hold on, what was in Bulgaria? Is like snow or is like water? No, when I first went to Bulgaria, we went to like I want to, I don't want to mess the name. It was something with a beer, like Boulder Grave or something Bulgaria. Right, man, it, it smelled like straight cigarettes out there, you know. Like, <laughs> it stunk out there, but it was. It was cool. Right. The, the, I like the money difference. Right. 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 <laughs> I went and exchanged my money. I was like, oh, got a whole <laughs> bunch of money now. Right. So that was cool. And then the food was the food was pretty well, girl, you got some pretty good food. They got this place called I wanna say it's called Happy's. I was eating that like every day. This is a little place called Happy's. They had some good they had some good food in that jump. But yeah, I was a you I was I was 17. That was my first time going out the country. Went to Bulgaria, got a gold. So, would you graduate early? Nah. Oh. I mean, I was I was still in school. What? Still in school. Yup. It's like a it's like a month and a half of school and what, everything. But they sent you to work or? Huh? They sent you to work or they understood or they wanted to? I mean, some teachers was cool, but then some teachers sent me to work, but they gave us tutors and all that down there. Okay. And doing work for you. Okay, hey, okay. Help. I need help with this answer. What? <laughs> so what? it was cool. <laughs> yes, sir. Y'all looking sweet. <laughs> <laughs> I needed that. I ain't gonna lie. When the SAT tutors came through, they helped boost my score. I tried to say I don't need no tutor. <laughs> I thought I knew it all. <laughs> tutor came through, told me so. I mean, that's like that. So you say Colorado, 2017. You on the road. What's it like after that? Like. Um, after that, it was the the next following year. I got on the team again. Right. So now I'm peaking. I'm on the team again. COVID hit. Oh, did they reach out to you because you wanted you? So once you make it to the championship, you join the meeting, sign the papers, and stuff for them to email you. Right. And that's how you get all the information. Okay. Nah, that's looking sweet though. Like. If you ain't paying attention, man, we sitting with Olympian right now. <laughs> I'm gonna keep on. I'm gonna keep on dragging. If bro not gonna drag, I'm gonna drag for him. <laughs> Cause we going up, but now nah, that's crazy though. So how did how did the pandemic kind of affect your career? Uh, it affected it a little bit by we had to move gyms because we my gym was at uh the, the Boys and Girls Club right. over there. Livingston Road, Oxford Hill Boys and Girls Club. And it was connected to the, it was the Prince Georgia County building. So we couldn't get in it. COVID shut all the whole uh, school system buildings down. So we was training outside, really. And then we had to go find a new gym right. that we could um, have people in. So then we moved out Capitol Heights, a place called the campus. But it didn't really, it didn't really uh, stump my career, really, because my coach, he was on it. It was right. outside training. Right. Yes. Still getting that work and never, t never stopped. Right. It was still going at it. As you should. Uh, we just wasn't fighting. That was the only thing. Right. We still training, though. I mean, that's cool. Did you Did you, uh, Did you? you go to prom? Nah, no prom. Class of 2020. Cool. Oh, that was your class. I ain't respect. Kale. So 2021, what did that look like for you? Like, you outside, no school? Man, 2021. I was like I said, I was still training. Okay. Uh turned elite. I was 18. Okay. Now I'm fighting the big boys, 18 and up, okay. 30, 20. I'm fighting the big boys now. So I, I try and get on the elite team. The elite team is that that team where you go to the Olympics. Right. So I'm I'm fighting the best in the elite. I'm in that. Get on the team. But the 2020 Olympics ain't happen. So they still had the 2020 team there. Right. One getting paid, this week plus start getting paid and all that, you on this team. 
one getting paid. I'm out there. I'm helping that Olympic team. I'm sparring everybody, getting good work. I'm handling my own. I'm like, oh, I really can do this. Like, right. I really can do this Olympic stuff. They got Olympic uh, teams coming in. They got Australia there. They had Jordan there. So, and I was I was sparring the Olympians too. I'm like, oh, <laughs> I'm 18 at the time. So. It's like I'm still like a little young and I'm right. spawning they Olympians, they like thirty-eight, this and that, all right. the experience. Mind you, I started by that time I'm eighteen, I started competing when I was thirteen. I'm five years experience, so I'm okay. happy. Right. Uh yes, yeah, so I, I did that, I sparred with the other Olympians. I was I was doing good. No kept 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 it going then. We had Worlds 2021. That was a big thing. World Championships. They, we okay. ain't won a world medal since, they said, 2007 or something. Right. And I went out there. I was competing with past Olympics that just came off the Olympics in August. Beat about three or four Olympians. Dang. The reigning world champion. I I, I had a hard little bracket. So I they, went they recorded her, them joints? Yeah, they recorded them. Okay, they, I didn't They, they up on there. But yeah, I won the uh, one of the young youngest ever to win uh, the World Games at the age eighteen. Oh my goodness! Do y'all hear this? I yeah, uh, you gotta know one more time. Hold on, the youngest, youngest, the youngest ever to win the Olympic. The, no, the youngest ever to win the World Championships at the age of eighteen. My my first elite tournament before Olympians and the reigning world champion. Man, shout out to you. <laughs> shout out to you. You really earned it. Like, you really put this work in, and I see you. Just shout out to you. I just want to give you your flowers while you, you know what I'm saying, while you here, band from the area. You know, I'm excited. I'm excited. I can't wait to watch you compete. You know what I'm saying? Can't wait to, to cheer for you. But one of the other things I wanted to get into, though, is like, how do you maintain your composure when it, they feel like they cheating you or feel like they making the wrong call or like keeping a level head. Um, that's something I'm still struggling with now. I be coming back to the corner, they be like, Oh yeah, you lost that round. I be like, How? Right. I don't know. I just just go out there and try to compete. Right. I never felt like I'm a go for like if I lose the first two, like you gonna see that last round, I'm gonna try to get the knockout. I'm just a competitor really. I don't I hate losing. Right. It's just I don't think I keep my head. I just make me angry, and I just try to go knock them out. Right. I seen you. I seen you in. Uh, I seen you in that one fight that we turned on that we started with. Bro, I tried to hit you with some flurries, and then you came back and hit him with some flurries too. Like stop playing. Like your your whole demeanor was like stop playing with me. Yeah. <laughs> he yeah he was a a vet Olympian. He he was and this was the, this was a tournament to uh, get to the Olympics. So that's right. why I punched my ticket to go to the Olympics. So everybody was coming with their best, and I, I just I knew I had to get it done. Nah, you definitely did. I was looking at them joints, and it was, it was quite a fight. But clearly, you know what I'm saying, the winner. Yeah. <laughs> nah, man, I ain't gonna lie. Like, I I enjoy watching you fight. Um, I can't say I know much about boxing, but what I will say I noticed from when I watch you fight is like you like explosive. Yeah, you know I be saying? trying to get in and get out. I don't like getting hit. Right. Like, I ain't I ain't I ain't trying to get hit on none of that. Right. But I ain't scared to get in there. I'm gonna get in there, but then right. I'm gonna get out. Of course. Catch me if you can. Of course. <laughs> nah, my man works smart, not harder. But I, I feel like that's definitely like one of the things that I feel like be catching them off guard. And I, maybe I could even go as far to say is like, sometimes I see you adjust your style, you know what I'm saying, to how you fighting or to who you fighting or whatever the situation is going on. And I like that too. And that's how I'm just looking at. One of the things I do wonder is like, how do you get adjusted to the people with more reach than you? Um, I really just make myself seem smaller than I am. Right. But I really got long reach. Like I be out jabbing a lot of people, so I make them feel like I don't know something with my stance. Like I sit down low and I have my my hands low, right. so you really can't time it. But then when I jab, I just bring it up. Right. I just pop it like quick. Right, right, right. Them quick jabs in there. It's like dang, how he just how he just land that. 
And it's the fact that I got great balance. So even if I got to get that extra little, I can reach sometimes. They teach you don't reach, but sometimes I reach. But I'd be so unbalanced, like I could be over my feet and still be defensive. Yeah, you, yeah, so. you, you definitely don't lose your foot. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like you definitely can get them wide, and I think that's what it is. That's one of the things. Like they definitely underestimate, like you putting some extra, uh -huh. pause, some extra inches on it. You know what I'm saying? Like for sure. Yeah, I know. be I be reaching out a little bit sometimes. Right. But I'm just so defensive, and I be having uh I be having my feet under me for real that I could do that. Right. So, Nah, you definitely be looking sweet though. I ain't gonna lie to you. Like, I be looking, I'm like, okay. Uh, and I think like for me, maybe even watching these joints, I under underestimated your power. But it wasn't. I don't think it was. I don't know which one of these joints it was, but all oh, your punches was making breath fly. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, versus Brazil. <laughs> no, I had like, to get my get back. <laughs> me and him, that's my rival. But okay. We done fought five times. We three and two. I beat him the first two times. He beat me the next two after that. Then I beat him in a little pan. That was a good day. That, that, that Olympic. What? That Olympic spot. I was like, nah, so you ain't beat with, me again. Huh? It's over with now or it's, or it's determined of they match the hey, bracket? One time, yeah, when they match that bracket, hopefully we get them. I want, hey, that's my rival. That's my boy. Like, you didn't fought so much. We got right. so much respect for each other. And we just go in there and we compete. So hopefully... We uh, hopefully I see him in the championship in the Olympics. Right. If nah. not in the championship anytime earlier, it is what it is. But I want I would love to go out fight my fight my uh, rival with my my good man. Nah, no, that's from definitely Brazil. Sweet. My good man Luis. Yeah, he a great fighter. I love competing with him. He bring out the best in me for sure. So I'm I look forward to seeing him in the Olympics. I know it's going. If I don't win the tournament, he gonna win the tournament. Right. Like that's how every tournament go. We the top two and they just. So happened that we on, we in the same uh we in, in the Americas. So right. we always competing. Continentals is always us. Anything uh, we do. Um that's sweet. That always has somebody, you know what I'm saying? You see when you out there, you know what I'm saying, you gotta you know Ver gonna be out there. Yeah, he he, <laughs> he ended up qualifying at the the second qualifier. So he def yeah, I'm gonna see him in the Olympics. With this joint with the um the Santiago right. joint, right? Yeah, that's him right here. Brazil. Oh, dang. Yeah. I ain't think I seen this one. We done fought, like I said, we done fought five times. I gotta watch this one. I definitely gotta watch this one because I thought you was talking about, was it Cuba? Where you cut his eye? Yeah, I cut Cuba. I thought you were yeah. talking about, bro, but nah, you definitely said Brazil. Okay. <laughs> and uh, it's the critics. Everybody was saying he gonna beat me, man. That I can't get past him. I was like, how y'all saying that? Like, I was ready to beat him twice. I lost twice to him in a row, like back to back, kinda a little bit. Yeah, back to back. So they was oh Brazil got his number. I'm like, come on, man. Do do the cheering distract you or be silent in the ring? Uh, nah, the cheering don't distract me at all. Anything, if anything, if somebody hit me with a good shot and they hit a crowd uh, chair, I'm gonna hurry up and get it back. Right. So, uh, yeah, like yeah, I said, yeah, I'm I have seen that. So, I definitely have seen that. As soon as I get hit that. with a shot, I'm getting it back right, right away. Like smart too. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was one of the joints I was watching. I'm not sure which one it was, but I think bro I hit you and then he put his hand up and then you tagged him right away. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Part like was cute. They do that a lot. Oh, oh. Yeah, it probably was probably cute. Was cute. <laughs> He was doing that a lot. Kept trying to put his hand up. I'm like, come on, bro. You're not doing nothing. Hey, I think I think it's definitely cool that you do not lose your composure. And even when you do lose your composure, it's not even losing it. It's more so like you just giving them a little bit of extra. Aggression. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like it's just turned up a little bit. It don't. It's not like it's out of control. Like some people lose their cool and lose the fight. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But like. I don't see you do that. I just see you get your get back and then you back focused again. For sure. As, long, as soon as I get that get back, I'm going to be back to boxing smart. But I, before that, I got to be aggressive and get it back. Right, right. <laughs> do you think that's the that's like the DC mentality, though? That's definitely that. That's that right there. You can't let nobody just hit you in your face. Yeah, and nothing. yeah gonna, and, and the reset. Nothing. Everybody around you going, oh, he's sweet. Like, <laughs> <laughs> he burned. I'm like, nah, man, that ain't what this is. 
What was it? Is it any DMV artist in particular that you crank to when you training? Yeah, I be cranking to a lot of DMV artists. Uh, I be cranking. I ain't gonna lie, my favorite DMV artist of all time. I'm never gonna stop cranking. Like I gotta crank him before my fight. I listen to Swipey before every fight. I feel that. Like, I'm cranking Swipe before every fight. He had me turned up. I feel I'm that. Not gonna lie. Nah, long live Swipey, nah, man. For real, he but definitely yeah, do that. I'm out. I, I be listening to everybody though. A little bit of everybody. I be listening to uh, Savage, Ramo, okay. Lil Low. Okay. Listen to them. Riff, right, right, right. yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Again, some good crank game. Gotta shout my man out though. I definitely listen to my man music. Uh, Lil Benji. Lil Benji, okay. Yeah, gotta go check him out for sure. What? We gonna get his that name, and we gonna put that joint right here. So we can shout out to Lil Benji though. Um, adjusting your diet, bro. What where has that been like? Especially like getting older, and you know what I'm saying, kind of seeing your body change, or maybe I should say more mature. Uh, so I had went, it was, man, getting my diet together was crazy. So I had went a vegetarian when I first started fighting this weight, 125. And it was working out for me. It was cool. I was feeling strong. I was energetic. But I was doing it wrong because I wasn't getting the right protein. But before then, it was working. I, I was feeling good. And then I was light for my weight. Like when I first started fighting 125, I probably was walking around probably like 128. Right. So I never used to cut weight. Like I said, I ain't like doing it. I feel like, all right, I'm too big for the weight. I'm moving up. Right. I know how to fight. But I locked in at 125 to fight for the elite, uh, for my way all the way up through this, uh, through this Olympic cycle. So then I started getting big. I started growing, getting big for the weight, cutting and not getting my protein. I was deficient in a lot, in, a, in like, Basically all categories, iron, vitamin D, vitamin C, vitamin B, I was deficient. Right. I was cutting weight, it was getting hard. I was, and this one I went on like a little losing streak, like I was at the top, I was, I won world games. Then after that, I got silver at the Continentals. Then, I, But I lost it, then after that I lost again. Then I lost another one, I lost three straight, but I could tell like my body did not feel the same. Like I was weak once I got down to weight. So I had to um, incorporate more protein into my diet. I was still vegetarian. Well, what was that protein though? What we'll ended up being? Uh, like... I was I was drinking shakes. Okay. Uh, okay. Little shakes. I was eating my tofu. I was chick incorporating chickpeas. Right. I chickpeas was figuring, figuring out the right. little uh, cause for me. I thought I was just loading up on carbs because I know carbs give you energy, like you. But those carbs give you a short, like they right. for like an hour, two hours before the fight, give right. you a boost. But protein is throughout the day; they give you energy throughout the day. So, what you hit a you hit a morning joint, or you hit one prior at like four, and you fighting at night, or you fight in the morning? We fight in the evening, so like one session probably start at like twelve or one, then the next session started at like six p.m. So, what's the best time to have your protein shake so it's not in the way of your fight and it's giving you the energy? Oh, no. So, I uh, have some protein, like some eggs and stuff. Okay. I was incorporating a lot of eggs and stuff. I eat that at breakfast and I have a protein shake probably like two hours or something before my fight. Okay. Okay, okay. Make sure digestion is getting in my system. I was taking uh, vitamins. Right. Start getting my iron up and stuff. Uh, Omega 3s from what I would get from eating fish. That was that, but then I still felt like I wasn't me. Like it was coming up, but it was, it still wasn't that. So right. I went pescatarian last November, and I been dominating. Like I went to the the Pan Ams, All right? Dominated. Is it is it hard to find what you want to eat outside? I feel like that's the hardest part of eating right. Sometimes it do be like that. Only. Really, at like little family events, you gotta make sure you tell them like, "Hey, y'all cook for me or something." You yeah, go out to a little, yeah, yeah. Little little cookout. Before, they right. got the burgers and the hot dogs on the yeah, grill. Yeah, I've been like, thinking about that. I'm man, trying to like, cut all that. Yeah, have some deviled eggs and it'd be cool. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> deviled it's, eggs it's and pasta a seafood salad. salad. <laughs> right, oh, we <laughs> good. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, somebody made some sweet deviled eggs recently, bro. That's they should be sweet or they should be salty. Salty. Oh, wow. Right. Like my salty. Yeah, I'm about to say them salty. Red, red, uh, paprika. Yeah, on it. They yeah. be getting right. 
they be getting right. Um, let me ask you though: Are you an athlete or entertainer or both? I feel like I'm an athlete. Like I, I feel like I'm good at every sport. Like I just, I don't know. I, I know, it's like I do a sport and I just be good at it. Like I play volleyball or something. Right. I'm just playing, and I, I go out there and do good. How you, I do. I, I be I be golfing a lot. What you what you think that is? Because I know you say you got balance before, but maybe it's something more than balance. Because I may be, maybe football and boxing you need balance. Yeah. I don't know about golf. Yeah, I, 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 golf kind of like boxing. I just, I just I get my boxing standing. It's all about rotation. Okay. It ain't even about hitting hard. Like you rotate right and right. It'll follow through. It's gonna go where you wanted to go. Oh, so, so maybe like a control of strength. Yeah. Maybe yeah. like technique, strength control. Technique wise, like I got the technique for golf. Right. But I feel like even with your rotation and how much strength you apply, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, with it, because I think I've been to the putt putt and the driving joint. Yeah. Um, I ain't been to top golf though, but I feel like I feel like the strength, you know what I'm saying, maintenance or maintaining how much strength you're gonna put into the swing. For sure. And then even your eye coordination. Yeah, your eye coordination, you gotta keep that eye on the ball for right. sure. No, nah, that's like that though. Um but you don't you don't think the the entertainment aspects cross over, or you think you're an athlete until you go pro, or you don't think entertainment is a part of being an athlete? Entertainment definitely a part of being an athlete. Uh, make you more marketable, get you more fans. Okay. But I just gotta figure out how that. I don't know. I feel like I just let my boxing do the time. My my fight style entertaining because I'm so active. Right. Like, it's always you're gonna see big punches. You're gonna see. Right. Flurries of punches, ten punch combinations, right. and stuff like that. And it, I just got it. I already got like a, a, a exciting style. Right. And my defense be on point. They had throw about six, seven punches. I slip, weave all of them. Right. So it's like I already got a, a aggressive style. I mean, a, a exciting style. style yeah, yeah, entertaining style. Boxing. None of my fights really be boring. Like, never. It's never going to be like, <laughs> oh, wait till they do something. I'm right. always going to be doing right. something. You trying to get up in there. Up. You yeah. even come to the middle of the ring phase. For sure. <laughs> they, ain't going to trap me in no corner. <laughs> oh, man. Hey, shout out to bro, man. Like, we really going up today. Um, I got a couple more questions I want to get into. Where you see yourself five years from now? Five years from now, saying I win this Olympic gold, I'm gonna turn pro right after, and um, start my pro career by five years. And pro, I feel like I don't, I don't want to be boxing for the rest of my. I want to win like a ten year pro career. I want to just get in, get my little experience, like my first eight fights, get right. the rounds in there, start going after all the top people. And getting them belts and making a name for myself and then retiring. What's your what's your um your road to Paris record? My my amateur record, I wanna say I'm about two two seventy, two eighty and nine. Golly. Yeah. Two eighty and nine? Something you almost like had three hundred fights. Yeah, for sure. I go to the uh like every tournament I go to. I always would make it to the championship, so, and then, so that was I was getting about three or four fights just from that, and I was active, like, especially when I first started boxing, I probably was getting about twenty five fights. I think I even got like thirty fights one year, just a span of a Man. year, just from going to all the tournaments and winning them. Damn, what part of DC has best helped you on this road to achieving greatness? Part I'm from Southeast. Right. Really. Southeast. I, I even go back to my old uh, elementary school. I've been back there two, three times. Speak to the kids. Right. It's just good. And then the community love. Go back around the way or stuff. Everybody show love. So. It's cool. Yeah. You used to go to the go go. Nah, I didn't used to go to the go go. You know how to beat your feet. It's, I ain't the best. At, I can beat my feet if okay. I need to, but. I ain't just, I ain't crazy with it. Like, <laughs> ain't, I ain't, I ain't in the Beach of Feet Kings. Nah. <laughs> nah, respect that. Got like a couple moves I could do. I can't go for no more than like 30 seconds. Then it's just like, I, I'm out of moves. Okay. 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 
Um, let me see. Let me see. I think now we can hop into the five random questions. I'm trying to think. I really enjoyed this. Uh, this Santiago, is that yeah. what it was? I really enjoyed that joint. You was fighting growing up? Nah, look, I went to box. You know Nomis? Nomis? Yeah. It's a little boxing gym, little alias joint. Um, alias little boxing joint by, by guy you that. <clears throat> and I used to train over there, but I ain't never, mm. I ain't never spar. I was just trying to get right. You know what I'm saying get fit. Yeah. I was reckoning though. What, what never, age? What age was that? Uh, I want to say this is probably like ninth grade, tenth grade. All right, getting yeah, right. But I was job wrecking. I was wrecking <laughs> everybody. It wasn't. I can't say. I definitely lost my shit, but I definitely was cooking a lot of niggas. I ain't gonna say I lost endless either. Though I feel like I won more because it wasn't like I was fighting endless. Like if mm-hmm. if I was fighting, it was for nigga, a reason. Yeah, like a nigga really bored it. He bored it there because I'm pretty calm and composed like yeah. I might even let a couple things slide but it's a couple of things I just cannot go for <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I was addicted to fighting growing up I know I fought for some dumb reasons I done fought for some reason somebody made like a oh mama joke about like third fourth grade and I just like, all right come on fight <laughs> I, I, I was just one of them like all right we fight like if I had a bad day you just say something wrong we fight no nah, I had a rival like that I had a rival like that. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't even going to name, bro, because, bro, right? But we was definitely going crazy, and we had a lot of fights. Like, he was that type of nigga. He yeah. like, bro, yeah, what's going on? Like, he type of nigga just come grab you by your shirt, and I'm yeah. like, oh, like, this is what we on today? We're alive, and this was year after year. But I think at a certain point, I just was like, nah, fuck this. I'm not about to just keep on wrecking. Like, shit going to yeah. start getting more lethal. And even <laughs> in today's time, like, if we was wrecking, Probably as much as we was ragging, shit probably would have got lethal in, in today's time. Nah, for real. These <laughs> little youngest today don't play. They do God. not like, play. I'm glad I grew up wrecking. Like, if these youngest can't that. fight out here. They cannot. They cannot. That's like, how, that's I grew up with my cousins, WWE. We always wrecking or wrestling on some WWE or something. They right. out here. Right. So who got the best gun? Like toting young <laughs> niggas, totin no beard, no mustache, just outside toting is Man, crazy. What? Like, uh, I'm glad I grew up wrecking. Right, that's why I made my best friends. Like, I feel yeah, like you right. Man, when you wreck somebody, y'all just be cool after that low key. Like, especially back when you was younger. Like, I feel like I fought everybody, everybody around the way and stuff. And then we just was cool. Like, oh, you we. We outside playing basketball the next right, day. Right. That's just how it was. Like me, and, me. And that one day is just up there. Yeah, it's like, it's different. It ain't no. It's no. We ever gonna be cool again? Like it's no <laughs> forgiveness, no mercy. Like it's just gonna be really be that. But now nah, I had a man like that. We used to definitely. Oh, not used to, but it was probably one time we was really by the wreck. And then after that, he really came my man. Yeah. My man, Gio. Real ass. Shout out to bro. Let's roll my Brody. But they take that. Oh, that's the other thing I was gonna say. My bad. About to hop into the five random questions. The first joint is, you watch anime? No, I don't watch anime. That's crazy. A lot of the topics that you talking about that, you know what I'm saying? They some strong principles that they- I need some I need some uh, recommendations. Hey, like, I put you I on. I hear a lot about it, but people don't even be giving recommendations. No, nah, I put you on. This is one joint. Niggas be boxing on that joint. They be wrecking for <laughs> real. Like, they don't have no powers. They just be straight power. Like, niggas work out every day and- be wrecking niggas. Yeah. Um, the second random question is if you could live anywhere in the world, where would you live? Anywhere in the world. Um, um anywhere in the world. Yeah, like I, it wouldn't it wouldn't be no cost, you know what I'm saying? No Food probably be accommodated for you. Where would you wanna go? I don't, I don't feel like it's, since I travel, I don't feel like it's one specific spot that I go to because I just love seeing the world. But I say, I don't know, Asia was nice. They got a lot of technology out there, especially like, I ain't been to Tokyo, no. I went to Thailand. It was cool out there. And everywhere else in the world, they like they showed mad respect. Like when I was out there, they was waving. They want to take pictures. Was like, oh. How it make you feel? You a celebrity, right? 
They don't even know me. They just want to take a picture because I'm black and I'm American. <laughs> that too. No, I'm over here. They say, they say like most places around the world, they feel like that about you. Yeah. Like, oh man, you black and you from America? What's going on? No, nah, like, for real. Can we take a picture? What's your Instagram? All that. But um, I had another good question for you. Give me one second. I'm reading down out there too. I don't really be having no crime. What you, what you was eating? Noodles and rice? Yeah, they had ramen. Uh, I was... I don't know. I, I stay American with it though. Like I was eating pizza. Right. <laughs> I think I got me some veggie burgers out that jump. So. Right. Okay. 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 But I definitely had. Uh, I was eating. I was eating at like the little spots. I had some of these veggie dumplings. Uh, one of those. They had these little. It was. I don't know what to call it. It was like a dumpling, but it had shrimp in it. That jump. Sports. I've been trying to see if they got them. That sounds like yeah. that. Um, third random question, I think. If we in a race, right? And I'm in fourth place. And you pass me. What place you in? Fourth. Okay. <laughs> Shout out to bruh. <laughs> no time at all. All right. I got one more for you. Fourth random question. Um, It's three different ways you can spell scent. Okay. Scent? Yeah, scent. Yeah, what are they? S E N T C N T. Uh huh. Uh, S C N T. Okay, okay. S C E N T. I didn't even say the E. You just say what? Yeah. Nah, but I seen you with the S C. My man is on point like a needle. Um, and the last and final random question. The last and final random question is uh, who is your favorite boxer of all time? Favorite boxer of all time. Like I said, I didn't grow up watching boxing, but so I like. What you watching now? I watch it now. So some of my, I don't got like a f specific favorite. Okay. But the people I feel like I watch the most and got the most exciting styles is uh, Lomachenko. Okay. Um, Terrence Crawford okay. and Canelo. Okay. That's a cool list. What? Is there anything that you think that we should look out for? Any fights or anything that we should tune into before you go to the Olympics? Am I fights or boxing in general? The boxing in general. Uh, you got some fights coming up? No, I don't got no fights coming up. I, my next fight going to be in the Olympics July 27th. Okay. I'm going to so, drop this joint July 20th. Okay, bet. So they get it, they, they get in order. N nah, I don't, I don't even know what... Fights coming up. Like, I don't even watch boxing. Okay. I still, I'm, I'm trying to get more into it. Like, I don't watch boxing. Like, I was going to watch the little 5v5 that came on that, and I ain't even watch that. Like, it just, I don't know why. Let I me get you. get into it. Let me get you one more random question. What do you like outside of boxing? Or how do you spend your time? And I ain't pocket watching all your money <laughs> outside of Nah, boxing. outside of boxing, I just be cooling with the man, cooling with the family. I love family time. We outside right. in the house doing something, playing, playing spades or something. I just be cooling. And then I like playing sports. I stay at like bowling, top golf. Okay. We stay at the basketball court. How we many? How many strikes? My bad. When you going? When you going bowling? How many strikes you got? Man, uh, I don't know. I feel like I average. I'm averaging at least one thirty per game. That's that's when I warm up, but like okay. I, I didn't hit I didn't hit 200, 200 plus a couple times. God, okay, okay, all right, respect. I just yeah. went bowling for my birthday, so I know how them scores add up. And if you go bowling, you know how them scores yeah. add up. <laughs> respect, damn. Um, now nah, I appreciate you for coming through, bro. Nah, for real, thanks for having me. You know what I'm saying? Like you've been uh, you the first ever boxing athlete that we've had on the podcast on the show and i appreciate first olympian it. ever on the show you know <laughs> what i'm saying like we going crazy i'm so glad to have you I, I wish you safe travels and many victories safety and health and uh you know what i'm saying you want to add anything no i just keep i want everybody to keep tuning none of this joint i'm gonna repost this joint on, on my page and nah, stuff i appreciate you you definitely Need to go up. This was a cool little, cool little podcast, cool little interview. Nah, I appreciate it. The show was you. like that for sure. Yeah, just keep working. Nah, yeah, no you definitely gonna go up for real. I definitely appreciate you, A. 
Peace out, Girl Scout. Sweet dreams, designer jeans. See you around like a donut. And make sure you stay tuned to Taco Talks. Jamal Harvey, Olympian. From, from, you know what I'm saying? From the area, man. And we gone the fuck up. The best podcast you'd have never seen. And we pulling up with designer jeans. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? A lot of money busting through the seams. I ain't no rapper, though. You know what I'm saying? We'll see you next time. <laughs>